Hello and welcome. Today, we are going to take a deep dive into one of the fundamental building blocks of alternating current, or AC, electronics, the series RC circuit. That's a circuit containing a resistor and a capacitor connected in a single line. By the end of this, you'll understand how these two components interact, how voltage and current behave, and how we calculate important values like impedance and power. Let's get started. First, let's look at our main circuit diagram, labeled FIG. AC circuit containing the resistance and capacitance in series. At the bottom, we see a circle with a sine wave inside it. This represents our AC supply. Unlike a DC battery which provides a constant voltage, an AC supply provides a voltage that continuously changes in a smooth, wave-like pattern. We label this total supply voltage as V. Connected to this supply, we have two components in a single loop. This arrangement is called in series, which means the electric current has only one path to follow. The current, which we label with a capital I, flows out of the supply, through the first component, then through the second, and back to the supply. Because it's a series circuit, the amount of current, I, is the same at every single point in the circuit. The first component is a resistor, represented by the zigzag line and labeled R. A resistor's job is to resist the flow of current. The voltage across just the resistor is labeled VR. The second component is a capacitor, represented by two parallel lines and labeled C. A capacitor stores and releases electrical energy. The voltage across just that capacitor is labeled VC. Now, let's look at the basic relationships for voltage in this circuit. For the resistor, the voltage across it, VR, is determined by Ohm's law. This is simply the current, I, multiplied by the resistance, R. So, V R equals I times R. In a resistor, the voltage and the current are perfectly synchronized. We say they are in phase. For the capacitor, things are a bit different. The voltage across it, V C, is equal to the current, I, multiplied by a property called capacitive reactance, which we write as X subscript C. So, what is capacitive reactance? You can think of it as the capacitor's specific opposition to the flow of alternating current. Its value is calculated with the formula, xc equals 1 divided by the product of omega and c. Here, c is the capacitance of the capacitor, measured in farads. And omega is the angular frequency of the AC supply, which is related to how fast the voltage is alternating. A higher frequency or a larger capacitance results in a lower capacitive reactance, meaning less opposition to the current. A crucial point for capacitors in an AC circuit is that the voltage and current are not in phase. The current flowing through a capacitor actually leads the voltage across it by 90 degrees. Think of it like this, the capacitor has to let current flow in to start charging up before a voltage can build across it. Because the voltages across the resistor and the capacitor are out of phase with each other, we can't just add them together like simple numbers. To understand their relationship, we need to use a tool called a phasor diagram. Let's look at FIG. Phasor diagram. A phasor is simply an arrow, or a vector, that represents an AC quantity. Its length represents the magnitude, and its direction represents the phase angle. Since the current I is the same everywhere in our series circuit, we use it as our reference. We draw the phasor for current I as a horizontal arrow pointing to the right. Now, let's add the voltage phasors. The voltage across the resistor, VR, is in phase with the current. So, we draw its phasor, VR, right on top of the current phasor, also pointing to the right. Next is the voltage across the capacitor, VC. We know that the capacitor's voltage lags the current by 90 degrees. On a phasor diagram, a 90-degree lag is represented by pointing straight down. So, we draw the VC phasor as an arrow pointing vertically downwards from the same starting point. The total voltage of the supply, V, must be the combination of these two individual voltages. To find it, we add the phasors VR and VC together using the tip-to-tail method. Imagine sliding the VC phasor so its tail starts at the tip of the VR phasor. The total voltage V is then the arrow drawn from the very beginning, the tail of VR, to the very end, the tip of the relocated VC. This forms a right angle triangle, which we see in the next figure, fig. Voltage triangle. In this triangle, the horizontal side is VR, 
which we can call the adjacent side. The vertical side is VC, the opposite side. And the diagonal, the longest side, is the total voltage V, which is the hypotenuse. Now we can use basic geometry, the Pythagorean theorem, to find the magnitude of the total voltage V. The theorem states that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So, V squared equals V R squared plus V C squared. To find V, we take the square root of both sides. So, V equals the square root of the quantity V R squared plus V C squared. Now, let's substitute our earlier formulas into this equation. We know V R is I times R, and V C is I times X C. So, V equals the square root of, in parentheses, I times R, squared, plus, in parentheses, I times X C, squared. Inside the square root, this becomes I squared times R squared, plus I squared times X C squared. We can factor out the I squared term. This gives us, V equals the square root of I squared multiplied by the quantity, R squared plus X C squared. Since I squared is a perfect square, we can pull it out of the square root, where it just becomes I. This leaves us with our final important equation for voltage, V equals I multiplied by the square root of, R squared plus X C squared. From this, we can also solve for the current, I. By rearranging the equation, we get, I equals V divided by the square root of, R squared plus X C squared. This expression in the denominator, the square root of R squared plus X C squared, is extremely important. It represents the total opposition to current flow in the entire circuit, combining both the resistance and the capacitive reactants. We give this total opposition a special name, impedance, and we represent it with the letter Z. So, Z equals the square root of R squared plus XC squared. This simplifies our current equation to a familiar form, I equals V divided by Z. This is Ohm's law for AC circuits. Just as we had a voltage triangle, we can also create an impedance triangle, as shown in the diagram. We get this by taking our voltage triangle and dividing the length of every side by the current, I. The hypotenuse, V, divided by I, gives us the impedance, Z. The adjacent side, VR, divided by I, gives us the resistance, R. The opposite side, VC, divided by I, gives us the capacitive reactance, XC. This impedance triangle gives us a purely geometric picture of the circuit's opposition to current. Now, let's talk about the angle in these triangles, labeled with the Greek letter phi, phi. This is the phase angle. It represents the angle of difference between the total voltage V and the total current I. Looking at our waveform diagram, fig. Waveform, we can see this phase difference visually. The yellow sine wave represents the current and the blue sine wave represents the voltage. Notice that the current wave reaches its peak and crosses the zero line before the voltage wave does. This is what we mean when we say current leads voltage. The amount by which it leads is exactly this phase angle, phi. We can calculate this angle using trigonometry on our triangles. The tangent of an angle is the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. So, tan of phi equals Vc divided by Vr. Since Vc points downwards, we often consider it negative in calculations, so we can write tan of phi equals negative Vc divided by Vr, substituting our formulas, this becomes negative, I times Xc, divided by, I times R. The I's cancel out, leaving us with, tan of phi equals negative Xc divided by R. We can also use the cosine function. The cosine of an angle is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So, cos of phi equals r divided by z. This ratio, r divided by z, is so important that it gets its own name, the power factor, which we will discuss in just a moment. From this cosine relationship, we can also see that v r equals v times the cosine of phi. This shows that the voltage across the resistor is a component of the total voltage. To represent the circuit mathematically over time, we use sine functions. The instantaneous voltage, little v, can be written as Vm times sine of omega t, where Vm is the maximum or peak voltage. The instantaneous current, little i, is then written as m times sine of omega t plus phi. That plus phi mathematically shows that the current's waveform is shifted ahead of the voltage's waveform. Finally, let's talk about power. 
The average power, P, consumed by the circuit is the power that does real work, which in this case is converted into heat by the resistor. The total average power is the sum of the average power taken by the resistance and the average power taken by the capacitance. But here is a key concept, an ideal capacitor consumes zero average power. In the first part of an AC cycle, it charges up, taking energy from the source and storing it in its electric field. In the second part of the cycle, it discharges, returning that exact same amount of energy back to the source. Over a complete cycle, the net energy taken is zero. Therefore, all the average power consumed in a series RC circuit is dissipated by the resistor alone. We can calculate this power, P, in several ways. The most fundamental way is P equals I squared times R. This is the power dissipated by the resistor. Since VR equals I times R, we can also write this as P equals VR times I. And as we saw earlier, VR is also equal to V times the cosine of phi. Substituting this in, we get P equals V times cosine of phi times I. Rearranging this gives us the most common formula for power in AC circuits P equals V times I times the cosine of phi. The unit for this real power is watts. This brings us back to the power factor. The term V times I is called the apparent power. It's what the power would seem to be if you just measured the total voltage and total current. The term cosine of phi is the power factor. It's a number between 0 and 1 that tells you what fraction of the apparent power is actually being converted into real, useful work. In our RC circuit, the power factor, cosine of phi, is equal to or divided by Z. So, to recap, in a series RC circuit, the current is constant throughout. The resistor's voltage is in phase with the current, while the capacitor's voltage lags the current by 90 degrees. Their vector sum gives the total voltage. The total opposition to current is called impedance, Z. Because of the capacitor, the total circuit current leads the total voltage by a phase angle phi. And finally, all the real power is consumed by the resistor, and it can be calculated as V times I times the power factor, which is the cosine of the phase angle. Thank you for joining me for this detailed look at the series RC circuit. I hope this has made these concepts clear and easy to understand.